Hey everyone, welcome to my CSS tutorial part 1, CSS Crash Course for Beginner. In this tutorial, we will learn about the basic of CSS. We will learn how to write CSS in different places. And we will dive a little deeper into selectors, property and values. So, what is CSS? Uh, CSS is stands for Cascading Style Sheets and it describes how HTML elements should be displayed on the web page. Of course, it makes website prettier and um, it can be written in HTML file inside the HTML element or we can write CSS file separately with .css extension. The, the CSS is complete with the uh, three found based on three foundation. The foundation of CSS are selectors, property, and value. CSS works alongside with HTML to, to make website beautiful. Okay, this is the syntax of CSS, how we write this. So first, basically we write CSS uh, selector, and we open the curly bracket, we write the property and its value, and we close with the closing bracket. And the, the property and value also called CSS declaration. So this is the example we are going to later um, uh, implement our CSS. For example, P is the um, element and ID and classes are the attribute. Guys, if you, just want to let you know that if you are not familiar with HTML, I have created HTML course for beginner in my YouTube channel. So I'll put the link in description below or in the card. Go through the uh, HTML course first and get familiar with the HTML. It will make you much easier to learn CSS. Okay, because in this uh, CSS course, we are not going to explain much about HTML. Rather, we, uh, we um, focus more on CSS. So this is the actual um, a small piece of CSS. That says that the element P um, has the color property of color and value of red. So what it's saying is that the anything inside the P, any text inside the P, uh, P uh, paragraph um, color should be red. So if we use this um, syntax for this example here, see this arm paragraph with user profile will be in red color. We'll look into that in practical soon. So there are three places we can write CSS. One in line where you write HTML in the element directly. And number two called embedded CSS, which is basically you write on the top of the HTML file. And the third one is the extent, uh, external CSS file, where we write separate file for CSS and the file extension will be .css. Okay, let's check this one now and see how we can write CSS for this example. And we try in this three different way and we understand how we can write it. Okay, let's look into it. Okay, let's open the folder. I have a folder called CSS tutorial. I'm gonna want to open this um, um, in my BS code. Again, guys, this one I'm going to use uh, BS Code for Code Editor and the Chrome for the browser to load the uh, HTML page and inspect the CSS and debug the CSS. So if you don't have set up your web development environment in your computer, I have created that video as well uh, in my channel. I'll provide the link somewhere in the card or in the description below. Go and check out and set up your environment as mine so that you can follow along. Okay, if you have follow along, just create a folder and open in the um, uh, VS Code. Okay, once it loads, we'll just create the... Um, there is it. So now let's create the first file. Okay, I'll just put side by side so that you can... Um, first, let's create the entry file called index.html so this is our basic html page let's write down layout the basic html um syntax so here write down css real 
and okay in let's save this file and just right click on it and use the open with live server okay guys again this one if you are using VS code and set up the live server extension then you can see this option otherwise you won't see so if you can't see this one and if you wanna follow exactly like I have done it then uh, you should check out my um, modern JavaScript um, web development environment setup video tutorial which I will provide in the description okay, open with live server what it does is that it will load this page in our browser and every time we save our file it will make sense here now you can see CSS tutorial here okay let's write down a paragraph is like similar to our um, example so I'll just quickly write paragraph uh, with I'll just write the class name user info and I'll also write ID give ID to user oops okay yeah I'll just say and user sorry. okay when I save this file, it will load here on our web page. You can see um, I'm paragraph with user info. So now let's see how we can write uh, inline CSS. If you want to change this text color in red here, I currently it's in black. So we can provide inline CSS by writing style attribute. Uh, write style attribute and give color to red, for example. When you save it, see you can see the red color. That's how you put um, inline CSS. So if let, okay, this is how one way you can write down. So when you write inline CSS, this style will be implemented in the content that is actually inside this element. On we have another p tag here, and if you write any content here, it, this style will not be applied to any other uh, element. So same um, same style can be achieved from the embedded CSS, the number two method, second method. So to write the embedded CSS, just uh, create the uh, style element just above the closing head head element, and inside the element, now you can write selector first. You need to write selector. For example, he is the selector. And you need opening and closing curly bracket and inside now you can write the so now let's write I just want to show one thing so let's keep a uh, color the text color is blue if I save this this one will not work because the the way it works is that the priority for the inline is high priority first priority and the the style for the embedded CSS is second priority and anything you have written in the embedded CSS will be overridden by the inline for example if I just delete this one now see the text is blue because the um, embedded CSS has the target of P and text blue again if now so whatever you have written right in the embedded CSS can be override by writing in the inline CSS now you can see okay let's move this one we don't need it inline now you understand that and um, the other way you can write CSS is in the external file let's create a folder here called well, style and in, inside this style I want to create style.css this is the main thing you need to remember you can write anything you like in the file name but the extension should be .css. Inside CSS, now you can start away start writing the um, CSS uh, declaration. Let's say we can exactly copy this one, and maybe we change this one to green, right? Again, now this will not work here because the um, the embedded CSS has higher property, uh, higher priority over the um, 
external file. So if I remove this um, embedded CSS, the oh hang on before that we have to link before that we have to link this file import file inside the uh, our HTML file. So to do that, just go under the title and to link the file, just open the link uh, link tag and with the Arial style sheets and inside the SREF we need the path path to the style sheet so the path should be related to the index file which is the current editing file so first we have to go to the style folder and inside the style folder you have to go to style.css now we save it and now this one is loaded when we run the browser but it's not green because uh, the embedded has a higher priority embedded CSS has higher priority than the uh, external file so we can do test that one by removing this so let's comment I just want to show you how you can comment uh, if you want to comment any line in CSS you can do so by um, opening uh, sorry slash or slash star and then back uh, start and back uh, back backslash any content inside will be commented out so let's comment out this style here see? see now it is in the green color so now you can see here our text is in a green color which is actually coming from here before it was overridden by this color now you can see how you can easily write yes yes um inline or embedded or in external okay let's head to our um slide and see ne what next so now you know how to write css inline embedded and extent in external file so as you know already the the three foundation of css are selector property and value so maybe it's a good idea to understand selector in more detail so that it will be much easier for you to like decide how you can target the content you have in your web page once you understand the CSS selectors, it will be much easier for you to understand the whole CSS in the whole. Um, in that reason, I have uh, categorized selectors in five categories based on their features uh, or classic characters. So the, in basic selector, I'll, I'll just include the most commonly used uh, method of uh, selectors uh, and then I'll just make uh, element selectors and attribute selectors and after that we'll look into it uh, look into pseudo element selector and the pseudo class selector so the mostly used one is the one we're going to look into basic selector and also sometime in attribute selector and also like pseudo selector too but there are so many of them how and what we can use but i'll try to just use those one that are mostly used in day-to-day -day life okay let's go look into basic selector what we're going to look at in basic selector uh, i'm gonna look into the element id and classes the um element is like in this example this is like opening tag in our early earlier example so the p here is the element and this id attribute of the element is this profile is the value of the id we can use as profile to style the content of this uh, element or we can even use classes this user profile classes we can use this one to style the element so let's see this one in action so here in our example before we have written our um, paragraph with the id user and um, user info so um, in our style sheet let me put side by side so that we can see it okay in our example here let's uh, before we use um, element in our early example we use element to target this content and uh, wrote uh, the CSS declaration for this paragraph now just let's use user so that's the ID when you use ID When you use id to start target the content you always start with has 
and type the id value which is in our case this user make sure there is no space between the hash and the um, id value or there is no space um, in the value itself or try not to use number in front of the um, id or any uh, selectors okay so that means this is targeting this whole element and inside what do you want to do maybe let's say if the background color for example i want to give the background color black see now you can use you can use id to target the element and now you can give the background so you can write down background color like so or you can just only write background alone and it will still works so now if you want to use um, class to target that element we can do so by starting with dot period sign and the value of the class where there should not be any space between the um, period and value or the in the value itself so inside here you need opening and closing again bracket and inside there now you see what that is what CSS you want to implement here maybe let's make the font size a little bigger so let's do the font size maybe let's give 20 20 pixel and when I save see the font size has definitely gone bigger and there is a way to inspect the CSS so if you want to see like whether this one implemented here correctly or not you can always see by right click on the um, page and ins to the inspect and here you can see the um, element section and at the bottom you can see the star section yeah and you can see if you click this sign and then click on the element it will also highlight the um, the elements here in our console and this is I'm paragraph with the user info and ID and user as for this one and here you can see what CSS has been applied to this one now see user ID as the background color black and the user info dot starting with dot so class has the font size 20 pixel and the element P itself as the green color so this one by default by the browser don't worry about it now so these are the one you have written which you can confirm here similar this one here so if you see like this cross here that means this either invalid this is either invalid css declaration or this one has not been applied here and something else has overridden you see now if you untick it you can see like whether it can um whether it's working or not just to test you can actually edit the uh, con um, style here um, to make some changes here for example if you are using a uh, green color here you can simply change this one to value to maybe white and see it will change here instantly so but when you refresh the page it will go back to what is the original value from coming from your file system okay so this is you we're going to look into this more later on but this is your one of um one of your common place to come and keep checking every time you use um css and you want to like a uh, debug the css okay, i'll just close it for now okay in basic css yes you can use that one and you can use multiple like uh, elements or um okay yeah multiple elements to apply same style by giving value with comma for example if you want like the div here and you say i am div and you save here see this one is just a normal text here let's say if you want to share the same um css declaration as this p here you can simply put comma and write div and when you save it the both will share this um, CSS and if you want to share with this one the um, ID you can also do it here so by putting comma you can share with anything you like so 
you can put as many as um selector as you want to combine and then write the css inside the bracket curly bracket so now you can see this one exactly same because i share all of the um styles okay let's remove them okay so that is all in the basic selector and now let's look into in our uh, slider okay that's all about the basic selector let's look into the element selector so in element selector we have like four different ways we can use them to target a specific content one we say descendant um, selector with the space between elements value oh sorry elements tag and the child um target child element with the angle bracket adjacent element with plus sign and then siblings with um iphone okay let's look this one in practical okay okay let's look into our example here um attribute okay that's like the attribute selector so in attribute selector for example let's get our link here if you have for example link um that you're going to uh, slash about the next slash about us dot ml. Let's say if you have let's say about us HTML page to go to about us page, um, which you can see here, it's not gonna go anyway because I mean it goes to about us, but we don't have about us page yet. So in our case now. We can use this um okay this href is the attribute for a element and there are uh, like href normally goes to a element only but there are like a common attributes um that you can use on multiple uh, elements like for example id and classes class um here you can basically now you can instead of targeting with a okay let's do it just for example now you know already that we can target with element and let's do the okay just again background background red see the background is red here now instead of like an element which we already tried above uh, in element selector now let's use attribute okay attribute is href but when you use attribute we need to put um in the curly bracket sorry the square bracket see if you just do like this it does not work here so you have to put this one in the square bracket this is specific for the attribute selector and save it and then see now it's working the background color black and you can also combine this one with element see you can write down a here and um i mean we don't need to write here but in some cases like if you want to for example this one also have id let's say about link um now we can also give id here and save and it still work but if i only give id it's gonna apply in multiple because um the id which one p also has the id attribute right so you are not only targeting this element here because the other attribute has id too so if you only want to have the id attribute targeted for a specific a element you can do that by passing a at the front and when you save it it will if you put a space it does not because when you put a space it always takes a element and go inside on um, the id so all the child element of a that has the id attribute okay now what we can do we can even pass let's say let's go back to his area okay we know we know how to we, we use um a attribute so we don't need that one let's delete that and we can also let's say target let's say let's create this one copy one more the this one contact us contact us page so we got another link that take us to contact us page and this one is contact link different id So yeah, since we are um, targeting to href attribute, it's gonna apply to both of the content here. 
in a, in in this case let's say you only want to put red for about us and you don't want to put anything or you want to exclude this css from the other um element then you can now you can target like a you can give value as well like a, what's the value of the heads area about us so this is the value save it and now see so basically what we're saying here is that find the attribute with uh, element with heads area of attribute found two and and target the about hyphen s dot html value of the attribute which is on the first one and then apply this here okay this is how you use um, attribute there is many different way you can use attribute um, selector which will be too long to cover in this video but this is the basic fundamental you need to understand so once you understand how it works you always can like uh, work out it's for your need okay um if you have any want to know if you have any question or want to know more about it just write me in the comment section i'll try to answer you as soon as possible so okay this is the attribute selector now let's see in our slide okay we already tried the attribute name attribute name with value and then the element with attribute name so these are the attribute again that we just uh, looked into it um the next one is the pseudo element selector so we have pseudo element selector and pseudo class selector so only difference between element selector and class selector is that first thing you need you can realize is that from the scene so in element selector you write down selector and you write down double col semicolon and you write down pseudo element here and then of course property value and close by the curly brackets for example you can target p element and say first line with the red color so let's look this one um, pseudo element first and then we'll say the um pseudo class selector okay let's go back to our um editor back to our editor let's um try a few of the pseudo selector okay let's write the pseudo element selector let's create a div here underneath this one create a div and write the content inside the div okay see this one okay here are i'm gonna maybe okay i just want to write this one for some so here you see selector here now we can target this element um okay we target the div and use the pseudo element by providing double column and you can use one of the few options we have here is like a first letter we can basically style first letter only which is in our case s here in our case s here so what we want to do here with that s is that maybe make it make the color red and also give the um on size make it little larger maybe give two extra large and when you save it okay now the s gets larger and then the red color this style has come from here because we use the sword pseudo selector so this is one pseudo selector and the another one we can use the first line let's make this paragraph i want to for example give some Sorry, me some context, which is like a paragraph here. See this the um, first letter pseudo element selector is still working, large red. So here, what we can use another one is that we let's say target div, and for that div, double clone, and then say first line. So we can use first line. We can also give first line always the blue color. Let's say um, color. color oops blue see the first line you can see here blue regardless how many text comes in one line see the first line always have a blue color okay i'm only using here color and these like a font uh, because i just want to get um you understand the 
uh, selector first and then later on we'll go to the more a uh, little more deep into the property and values okay um like you know okay here now you got the first line so this is another one i wanted to show you and okay let's make this line little shorter so that we have our face this so one is first letter you can implement any css you want similarly you can use first line to the element selector and now we can also use another one use let's say again div and we use the another one called selection selection so it's saying that when you select this paragraph what do you want it to happen see now you can see like a light blue color is um giving background color and the text is white now we can completely modify this uh, the, the browser default value so inside here on selection we want maybe background color to give yellow and the color font color okay let's save it see now when you select it it will become back on yellow and you can change the font color as well just give the color less to the green see now when you select it the color is becoming green so this is basically overriding your browser default value and you can also provide this uh, element selector without targeting any specific element but when you do so it will override to all the uh, text which is on the page now i can do same thing with this one it now has like a background yellow and green color so let's put back it here so this one is back to normal and this one got the new values for the background and select some selection okay and the, another one commonly used are the after and before so that's saying deep let's say before that means if you want to add any content before this um element value here it will add and like whatever you put here the before let's say content I want um let's say um it will put right before this content okay, if I save this one see here some before content it just place as part of the actual uh, content before so this before puts whatever you put style here it will apply to just before this content and you can do after as well similarly with deep after year after and then opening closing bracket and you can even provide like an image for example uh, let me get this one you write down content and then give the url content and give url and you have to write the url of the image um inside the brackets i just got something from internet nothing really i don't know what's that see now we have this image whoa behind all the paragraphs so um let me show you bigger okay i don't want to resize now this is we'll look into that later See now this one actually some before content is coming before the actual content and after the actual content this um emoji comes. so it's same thing happening here as well after the paragraph here let's minimize this and just leave it as it is okay, for now so you can do that in after so this these are the um i think this is pretty much uh, all about the um pseudo element selector let's look into let's look into pseudo class selector so this element selector is um done now you know how to write down now right let's look into pseudo class selector so which is pretty similar to pseudo element selector 
the only difference now is here you're gonna use only one semicolon and you will have the pseudo class selector here and everything else is same in our case um, for the element a you can put hover and provide the color red okay let's look into example and see how it works so pseudo class selector there are quite some of them but we are going to look into only few of them that we normally use okay this large image is bothering me let's make a smaller one let's do content leave it empty and pass this um photo url to our as a background image so just give the property background image image and that's the value and we also need to give it's gone now okay we need to give the um few more value maybe let's give background size background background size maybe just maybe uh, 15 pixel and then display will make it uh, in inline block e inline block means display in the same line with the content here okay, and then let's keep the width and height with 50 pixel and height in pixel save it and now you can see the small emoji right after that See, this is you can target a uh, div and use this uh, pseudo element selector and then you can implement um after the content so regardless of the content by css you put the uh, some value after the right after the content okay that's we already gone through the pseudo element okay let's go to the pseudo class element the pseudo class selector so starting with pseudo class selector okay let's start from right here see this a the link um the very commonly used um pseudo class is hover that means if you hover over any element you targeted to you can change the style of that one in our case this about us here is a, a element right just give us a element and the hover is um with one column now and a column and open close bracket curly bracket and inside now give to the give the color or background let's say maybe give the change the background color to 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 black and text to text color to white now when we hover over this one see now you can see the difference so this is one um pseudo class element as a pseudo class selector to target and override the css okay now the another one i want to use is um link so see here link let's say link also let's do with the a again a provide the link in the link maybe text declaration none see uh, did you realize here before it was underlined um see the by default all the a element comes with the um underline but if you the text decoration none the underline will be removed so oops here i put text decoration none for the a link only so this is we i'm targeting link and the saying like text decoration is none and let's another one okay let's create for example if you have to create some list like uh, another list let's say i'll put i for example i'm just using emit 
um, to write more HTML element using MS shortcuts. Okay, this one I have all covered in the um, how to set up web development environment tutorials in my channel, which you can find description in uh, sorry link in description. So, uh, list. List item. List item one. Yeah, okay, let me put footer so that this content come up in the middle. I'll give minimum height. Uh, maybe 400 pixel so that it goes up a bit now we'll come okay. okay so if we have let's say a list item like that we can target like each list or alternative list or last list to modify the uh, style so let's start with the ELI uh, let's say first style maybe first style uh, let's make the fonts like a font weight font weight maybe 900 save it and now see this is more like a bold so we can target the first item and apply CSS to first one we can do similar to the last one as well uh, just simply changing last style and what do you want to do? Maybe last style. Let's make it um, font style italic, maybe. Font style italic and save it. See now, this one is now it. So we targeted to the last list, uh, last item, last style of the ELI using pseudo class selector. Okay, and let's do two more. So you can um, target. Uh, okay, um, which one? okay, yeah, so let's use one more. LI, oh, uh, this is my like favorite. Every time I have table, I use this. And child, this is the function. Yeah, you can write, let's say, first, I will write even. And what do you want? Let's say, for example, I want back. I'll show you what does that mean. Background, I will give the gray color and say, hey, this one means, and child means. Um, given number of child in you use the evenly so one is R, two is even three is R, four is even so every even uh, child use this um, yes yes I can make this one few more just for you to see There's six and seven see this one now uh, every even um, child has the gray can use same with the odd and maybe say equal okay, now the all the all child has the um, equa color so normally I like to use this one uh, light gray So this is for the basically you can use for the table like a strip uh, table um this will come very handy i mean i like this uh, um the end child pseudo class selector okay there are quite a lot of them uh i think you can just google this pseudo class selector. Yeah, W3 school has quite a lot in list. Pseudo class selector and somewhere here. Okay, these are the list you can use. There's quite a lot of them. Most of them you wouldn't even use them. Uh, but it's good to know like if you need to use them, you can quickly reference here and then see how you can use them. Okay. Mm, let's okay, that's all about the the sudo class selector as well and um, 
Okay, now we understand how to write CSS and we look into the selector in little detail. Let's look into property and values more uh, little detail so that we understand how we can properly write CSS. So let's jump in our editor. Okay, now let's look into some CSS property and the um, values. I'll just write down here because We've been writing here only a few like a font style, background color, and so on. So let's go a little bit more detail and look into commonly used property and values. Let's write down CSS values for your difference. Um, let's first look into color to Let's see what you can do with this color property. Let's create a section. Yeah, um, section, section inside. I want to give three property and values. So, okay, for this property and values, let's give a color. There are a few ways you can use color, okay? So all you would just want to okay target with S3, S3, and for this S3, maybe give a class name so that next time when you use S3, we don't collide the CSS. So yeah, property and value PNV. That's the class name. So dot PNV. So that's the combination you use to target this one as a selector. And now let's give the first time. First thing I want to give color color red and the background color um, black. See uh, and save this file. So here you can see the um, new style coming from here. So till now this point we are only giving red name. So you can use two different ways. You can use hexadecimal color. Okay, let's search for hexa color and maybe just hexa color for there and see this is the um hex see these are the color right? You see this has a number, these are the hexa value. So you can let's say in our case red color. Okay, this is let me write red, and okay, this is the hexa value for red color. I can here in our in our um, sample here the red. I can write red or I can use hexa value. Save it, it still work value and we can also write RGB value. If you want to know the RGB value, you can do like this. Go to the context, right click to inspect and then here just click on this one arrow and this pop-up window come to um, show you the color. Now you can select any color you like and you want in hexa or you want in RGB. It is for the opacity if you want to make transparent like uh, leave A for now so if you want hexa just uh, change hexa or sorry the RGBA or HSLA or the hexa okay you can use any color any format of color you like so this RGBA red green and blue A for um, opacity this one also A for opacity this one you saturated and I think light if I'm not wrong. You can adjust it and uh, hexa and as you yeah. Okay, now let's choose hexa. Okay, we already use hexa. RGBA, click. So this is the RGB value. So you write on RGB. Let's go here. Now instead of red, now let's write on RGB. That was the value from the color now see it's red and it's the content our content is still red you can see yeah 
So you can find this one. There are like those hundreds of color palettes. When you search for color palettes, you get so many of them. Option all of this one will give you the um the value of the color. Or you can directly type here red um RGB red RGB and here you can get it. So this is how you can write down color. And if you want some like opacity, it means transparent level. Let's say one means uh where is it up? Let's close this one. One means like a no transparent. Um if zero means totally transparent, you cannot even see it. Let's say 0 0.5, a 50% transparent. Uh, it, oops, don't forget the closing bracket. See now it's like a little bit um, um, shaded. So this is how you can write down color. And um, okay, that's the color. The next, um, okay, let's use the another background uh, property and value as well. Okay, inside this section, let's create the P paragraph with section content and say let's say um here a bit some content here okay let's get this background you can even use like an image as a background so simply let's call that class and open close, uh, open close curly bracket and do background color sorry not image and we have to give URL for the image let's start some uh, okay this I want this example I'll copy the uh, copy image address and put it here and save it it's not gonna show as we expect here because now we need to give height for this content Let's give height to 200 pixel, maybe 200 pixel. Now the butterfly not sure where it went. Let's uh, make it position to center so that we can background position center. Okay, and this one we just make it like a um, background size, like a cover means cover the whole content this paragraph so background um, size just make it cover if that means cover all these um, cover all this uh, selected uh, targeted element which one is P so cover see now you can see the image image here you can even use this one without the image tag when you save it will still so let's another con another content another let's see another. then the era with last name not here uh, you can write anything you like, but whenever you like class name, make, try to make it meaningful so that you know where you have your state. Okay, let's write down the uh, the gradient. So we can make like a to mix the two different color to make it like a gradient in for a paragraph. The way you write gradient is like um, basically first you say um, background. and in the value write down linear gradient is a function and you provide what color to what color you want to write down i mean you want to display so let's say if you want to have the red and blue some here and maybe i'll just so that we can see under so and 
Yeah, this one. See, um, maybe. I'm done. Here, yeah, please. Skip. Let's make it 50. See the color gradient from top to bottom. By default, it's from top to bottom. So you can also specify by angle how you want it to display like not from top to bottom maybe you can uh, maybe you want to do 180 degree 180 degree best comma when you save it okay that's the default let's do 90 degree see now it's going from front to back if you do minus 90 degree full switch around it's coming from back to front so this is you can uh, play around with the color gradients to make this um, color like a multiple color you can even write more than one color simply by just putting another color maybe let's say yellow here yeah this is how you do color gradient okay i think that's pretty much for the um color and background let's now look into oh, font okay. okay with the font let's first thing I want to show you how you can use like a, uh, import another font to change your like a default font this default font is called safe font um, that is used by Google if you want to understand more about safe font simply just search for fonts and then probably w3 is cool have like the uh, all information about it so like uh, yeah font family basically tan neurons times and serif so these are like a safe font that browser uses like basically when we import uh, any like a custom font and sometimes if internet cannot load those um, custom font the, the font style will fall back to the uh, default one which I'm gonna show you in a second so let's bring some fonts from Google to Google font I like the robot one okay yeah let's get this font so I want this one like a by default use this select it will give you how to embed so it syncs first you copy paste this link in your html inside the header section remember where we where we added our external css here just write down just above it and save the file and after that we need to specify the font name. copy this person and and now in our style sheet let's go all the way on the top because we want to apply this font style to every text written in the page so to do that just write down star open and close curly bracket and write the font family okay i haven't saved this file yet you can see here let's check our page see the difference okay this is our default font when i save this file you can see the change okay let me save it in our font is much better looking so the font style is tends to the robot okay you can confirm that one by clicking on our inspect and here now see font families roboto and serif if you untick it it will send back fall back to our default browser safe font okay but when you refresh the page as long as it can load the one family from the Google font, it will display that. Okay, that's for the font importing. What about the manipulating form fonts? Now let's go all the way down. And for font, okay, try to one more. Yeah, uh, let's write another paragraph with last name font me can be anything so let's 
is some fun for property and values and save it okay this is like a default one um whatever is parent using so in font we can simply let's target to this um, element with the css selector and here we can give font when i write font here you can see how many options i can use font word font family which we already used here the font family so with the font you can use font display font various and font weight so the normally the mostly you're going to use is like a style weight and size let's use the font size it, you can define a specific size for the font let's say maybe make smaller 10 pixel you can save the font will become you can use the pixel is unit you can use pixel to specify how many pixel you want or you can do r e m sorry e m e m means the oops let's say um 2 e m so what e m does is that it will check what is the default size of its parent um the parent um element using it and based on that one it will multiply with this value whatever you if you put 0 0.5 it will multiply the actual size of the um, parent element uh, using font size and then uh, multiply with the 0 0.5 and puts the value so you can also use r okay if you use rem rem is like a, a root em so whatever is the font size of the root uh, element that will be um, based on that one now if the root basically root element is less is uh, 16 pixel so if you do 0 0.5 times rem it will put only 8 pixel for this um, font size here so this is the unit another way we can change the size of the font and another one we can use font um, weight is bold or thin or italic or bolder let's say bolder and um maybe i'll just so we can see bold uh font style font style italic okay so that's the font what about the you can use text as well now text has its own um properties now you can text text transformation when you do transform you can do all lowercase or all uppercase if i do uppercase it will make all uppercase there's another one called text decoration text de so basically text text decoration is like um it will override if there is any browser default value like for example if you remember here in our um a element when we have a element by default the text decoration was underlined and the underline if you are following along if you can go to your line 82 a link we provide text decoration not to remove the underline so that's another um the property for text we can use another one te text align uh, text align you can put like center or at the beginning or at the end let's write center to write the text in center so see no matter the screen size the text is not in center so that's the another commonly used one okay now this that's the font and text there are many more um you can discover that one um now let's look into maybe the padding and margin Let's create one uh, section where I'll write um, that's three heading level three and the uh, sum content div sum content. Okay, it's coming from something is overriding. I'll just change this div to span for now. Okay, some content. 
let's work on margin and padding see here there is a gap between these two so there is already some um, margin and padding default by the browser for has now if we write let's say give a background color to spam let's to span with the last name section span in short form so first let's give background to red obviously yeah see it's how it's like a, uh, wrapping up exactly as for the content now you can give this one a uh, first thing give a like a padding the padding is um maybe i'll show you in like, yeah see this diagram here so this is actual content here and this is like a let's say um the red border here this is the red area so anything you give any space inside the actual content area that is called padding and anything you give outside the area you call margin so you can actually give width to your border itself so let's say um border okay border i'll give gray um solid and two pixel green green okay see like five two pixels okay so that's the border of five pixel and there is no margin and no padding and this is like content is auto so if you write more content it will make the um area more bigger so okay so if you want to let's say don't want to you know the uh, the red color touching very close to the content um you can give padding to make it more open from inside so you can give padding padding top and pixel and okay you can do like a padding top padding bottom uh 15 padding left then padding right 15 oops padding right 15 pixel See, there is a gap now so you can write all of this one or you can use short-handed using like all in one just remove the padding and if you have like a top bottom is same and left and right is same you can just write down uh, two value only this one represent top and bottom here you can see padding 15 15 left 15 right uh, 10 top and bottom or you can if you have equal oops close it if you have equal padding everywhere you can simply write one that's a short-handed see you have padding all ev everywhere um 10 pixel you can exactly do same with the margin let's write down 15 pixel that means 15 pixel 15 pixel everywhere outside so how can we know if the margin is 15 pixel everywhere see when you highlight here can you this one the um um the little yellow sign showing so if i put let's say 50 150 you, oh, that's, see when i highlight this part is more like uh, covering more area so this is how you come to know the margin is 50 pixel everywhere now you need to know let's move to border again so border you can use solid border or you can change the color and um the thickness and you can use dot dotted with the dot 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 or you can uh, change to dash so double line so you can use anything you like so as well you can use dash one so 
you see whichever you need you can use it by changing value here i'll just leave as um bullet for your reference and then see this corner if you don't like sharp corner you can provide um border radius border radius um give about maybe five pixel so more you give the more it will become okay let's get that butterfly email image again here um image oops image remember the butterfly we got it before okay i'll just see and i'll give height and width about 100 pixel give height 100 and width we can give auto or we can fix with 200 close this okay this is the button okay let's give this image a class this butter okay i'll just uh, sort from butter so let's access that butter fly with um first thing let's margin top keep 200 pixel i need even more let's outside the section oh Don't even need this. Okay. Now um let's make this one circle using border radius property. Your border border radius um keep In our circle so this is how you get the circle if you want the image to be a little smaller make it smaller or um, width and height size okay see this is how you can achieve the circle using border so that is probably all about the border with you can use this width height and margin and padding on almost all the elements and let's um, copy same image I want to put same image here but let's say I don't have a size of the image first name see what happened here this image is overflown it's way big now we cannot be all in the given size see we need to scroll left and right and this left and right if you see this one scroll that means the content is overflow so if you don't like this overflow and you want to hide in some case you can use that by using the butter one plus there is a property called overflow what do you want to do you can do overflow hidden this will hide um See now there is um when I save the file the overflow is now the 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 scroll is gone because now the whatever is deep deep is always uh, as for the um viewport size and any content is overflowing if i let's say comment this out now see you have overflow so now the content inside the deep cannot be overflowed this one will work for um vertical or horizontal overflow if you only want to specify like vertical or horizontal you can specify like so and next time if you have vertical overflow 
it will um, only work for horizontal, like a vertical. Let's say here, if I give max height, three hundred pixels. See now there is an overflow scroll. So you can also do overflow Y and the scroll is gone. Or you can just remove this one and write overflow hidden for both X and Y. Okay, there's another property called float. You can float content uh, left, right, or anywhere you like. So let's say, let's create a another section here or oh, just put div maybe um div and let's write some okay uh spam float me float me some content before okay uh, how about we get p okay it's keep overriding from the all the p before so don't worry about the background here so we write down p paragraph and inside from the um float me so let's give this spam class float me now uh, we can target this float me and us and we can port this content right left or middle see now it's gone right Margin right to the oh. or thirty. Okay, um, mm. one, two, three. Way too much okay here let's make this okay so um i said the one float me they all float me so if i just do float me the float me one is floated to right and the other two and three are on the left um we can use a line called a line self I'll give this one to float 2 and float 3. Um, maybe not here. Let's change this paragraph, uh, spam to paragraph. Here, we don't need straight line. So, okay, here. And if you want this float me 2 goes in the center, we can do so by using the class name. And say text line center, and we'll go to. You can also give margin to this one to put a little bit left. If you want um class name like margin left. Be nice, little bit far. Now we can look into the position. How we can position the element? Let's create one uh, section section and um yeah i will keep section okay last name mm, i don't know it's five for now okay and here let's give this section make it visible first let's give this section with 100 percent height um 300 pixel and border we need to see the border border let's give um solid one pixel one 
course correct okay so this is our um this section like here let's create i want to write some let's see first time See, they both are like uh, starting from right where is it um that is by default okay, let's target this one um section inside the section i'm targeting the so by by default they are in relative position so you can use absolute and relative position so what happens when you use absolute position the content will try to go and start right to where it is started from its parent element if parent element has uh, defined well whether it is absolute or relative it will relate to that one and then um, position the content itself um, if there is nothing has defined no parent has defined the absolute or um, position if parent doesn't have any position then the whenever you provide position absolute it will try to match to the um, root element of which is HTML element to um, adjust the content so yeah, I will write down position relative see when I do absolute it starts from right where it's starting from and if I do relative it will like uh, create the relation between the parent one and it will keep some distance And you can give, let's say, um, give plus another iPhone 3. You can use that one to put the position fix, but from top, I want let's say. 200 pixel down on the line or is another okay this is like a div is overriding the um previously defined css so just in this case use this one fan maybe so now So now you can see here the position the different now see the um the first one the uh oh this the, no no nothing is different now let's say we need section and we need span so this is when you define the um relative and when you do absolute see when you do absolute it is starting right where the parent started um parent element started from so if i do uh the relative it's going a little bit away trying to make some relation with the i mean relate relation with the parents element it is taking like um on the floor so it's not it's starting right from where the parent started so it's keeping some relative position and with the fix um let me e you can like define top and left and right 
to define the position so this one is 200 from top so let's make it 50 so 50 pixel from top and then this space coming because of the uh, relative position so um let's look one example of position fix so let's say um not this one well, let's look better example let's create a button button say feed back and if you want this button to be always like stay somewhere on the left let's say i'll get this all this button and say first the position fix and the uh, one from top one from top 200 250 pixel and from right maybe one pixel and i save this that's maybe 150 See, regardless of the um uh, regardless of the is scrolling or not this button is always fixed sometimes you can see this one at the bottom you can also do instead of top you can say bottom maybe say 10 pixel and then you can like always leave this one feedback here or um user to click and give you feedback so this is one fix and the another one is sticky there is another one sticky that you can normally see in the um um, like a menu used in menu but these are the position you need to like you know uh, basically so that is all for this one this is getting really longer than I thought so this is like a very very basic stuff hopefully you guys learn quite a lot here and okay that is all for now guys I know this one I have left so many things behind which I think not really important to learn at this stage so if you have any query and or question you can join me in discord or write in the comment section and i'll get back to you as soon as possible okay i'll see you next thanks bye